So our next presenter is uh, Reza Mozapur, who is uh, in his second year of his PhD program in structural engineering at the University of Alberta under the guidance of uh, Dr. Mustafa Gull and Dr. Michael Hendry. Before starting his PhD, he worked as a research associate for the Islamic Republic of Iran Railways on maintenance uh, management system projects and wrote a book on urban tunnel management systems. Reza has international experience in the field of design, construction, inspection, and rehabilitation of railway infrastructures in collaboration with several railway companies, such as FIP Industrial in Italy, Pandrel in France, and Strail in Germany. Please welcome Reza. Good afternoon, everyone. Could you hear me? Yeah, looks good. Okay, perfect. Uh, thanks for joining us in this presentation. Um, as you can see on your screen, the topic of the presentation is evaluating railway track stiffness variations using instrumented wheel set and uh, accelerometer uh, measurements. Oh my. Thanks to Daniel's presentation, you all see this plot. The following plot visualizes the incident causes that pose the greatest risk to the rail industry. It shows failure of rail and rail components, and also track geometry are the most frequent cause of derailment with these um, actually problems. So let's move to the research overview. Uh, that the justification for this research project is uh, because of the last uh, Canadian rail research laboratory uh, has related poor track geometry conditions and stresses generated within rails with track modulus. Uh, also, there are technologies for measuring modulus, but they are all difficult to access. So the objective of this research is to develop a method to measure the track modulus from instrumented wheel set measurements and uh, evaluate the subgrade condition accordingly. The purpose is actually detecting problematic location with poor track geometry or those susceptible to some uh, rail defeats. Uh, the method presented in this paper is relating cyclic loading developed from vehicle dynamics and measured by IWS to cyclic displacement measured uh, from uh, integrated accelerometer data. Before I move on, I'd like to recap the main points of some related research. Uh, based on past research conducted at uh, CAR has clearly shown a strong relationship between the generation of track geometry defects and subgrade condition, especially with subgrade stiffness. The study relatively quantifies the impact of subgrade stiffness and its variation on the track geometry. And in another study shows the magnitude of bending moment is also strongly related to the stress being generated in the rail which passes the train and also to the fatigue of the rail. So now with this, let's move on the objective of the presented paper in this conference. The objective uh, is to evaluate uh, relative stiffness variation along the track using IWS data and accelerometer measurements. The main assumption is that track stiffness variation is the key factor to evaluate the substructure condition. Generally speaking, subgrade condition affects stiffness variation. Second objective of this presentation is developing a simulation to imitate the IWS experiment and validate the relative stiffness calculation methodology that we've developed and presented in the paper. So in next slide, I'd like to give a brief overview of the data measurement in the field and how we use them into the developed methodology. Um, here is a picture, uh, show the configuration of sensors mounted on the rail car to provide uh, direct measurement of wheel rail contact forces and acceleration data during the train passes along the track. There are strain gauges uh, to evaluate the loads between the wheel rail interface and also the accelerometer to measure the acceleration in some location on the uh, car. 
The field data are collected on a short line railroad over Canadian shield with large uh, variation in track stiffness. The methodology developed um, actually to use wheel rate vertical forces and side frame vertical acceleration signals for estimating relative stiffness variation. The next slides will present the methodology and the steps that we follow to calculate the stiffness based on these uh, obtained signals. As we've discussed, load and acceleration are obtained from the IWS and accelerometer. The sliding window is moved along the signal and divided the load and acceleration in a smaller part to look for the details. Then the stiffness variation are evaluated using the following steps. The step one is selecting a dominant frequency that exists within both load and acceleration data. To do this, load and acceleration in frequency domain are compared and to dominant and to actually select dominant frequency, uh, we use a mathematical tool to find that. The singular value decomposition is used as the mathematical tool to select the dominant frequency for these signals that we have. In step two, we calculate the deflection using the acceleration data and based on the selected dominant frequency in step one. The following equation uh, shows the way that the deflection is calculated. Step three is calculating the track stiffness variation using the following equation, which is simply load over deflection ratio. The next slide will present the methodology in the flowchart to visualize the steps uh, that we've discussed here. Mm, the following flow chart shows how the stiffness could be calculated using the load and acceleration data. This helps us to elaborate uh, on the main three steps that should be followed, which the first one is obtaining the load and acceleration signals and then converted them into the frequency domain to find uh, the dominant frequencies. And after that, calculating the deflection and the stiffness index for the section to evaluate the subgrade condition. So here are all the three main steps that we followed uh, during our developed methodology. So let's look at some real analysis, uh, an analysis on the real data, and then come up with the uh, following slides. Here is an example of using the field data to evaluate the stiffness variation over the following bridge. The selected bridge has a steel superstructure and also a concrete pier. Uh, so the load and acceleration are obtained from the um, IWS and also uh, from the accelerometer data. The plots show the load and acceleration signals and the sliding window will move along the signals to uh, convert them uh, into the small window a small as the a small vector as a small signals and then converted them into the frequency domain to select the dominant frequency between load and acceleration then the corresponding frequency will select it and uh, based on the explanation the deflection and stiffness index will be calculated so here is the load and acceleration in the frequency domain and the range of the frequency is selected between 0 to 25 hertz. Uh, and the reason is because of the limitation of the load frequency measurements. And the dominant frequency, uh, which is selected using the SVD technique, is about 3 hertz based on the um, algorithm. And the deflection will be calculated and also based on those information, finally, the stiffness variation along the section will be calculated. This plot shows the stiffness variation along the bridge. And you could see that the, estimation, that the estimated stiffness variation could detect the location of the pier and also uh, bridge apartment. So the primary analysis uh, shows that it is possible to detect some structural feature using the load uh, and side frame acceleration, but it still need further study. So based on the field data analysis, the results indicate there are difficulties to getting uh, actually the reliable magnitudes for the stiffness out of the data. 
So as the first point, we could say that the, pre the preliminary results assume as the relative uh, measure stiffness. And the second, we want to be able to prove the method we've developed conceptually. Uh, so we taking that into a numerical model and, and that's give us a chance to play with the different parameters and also test it out in an area that we have control on that and we have information about that. So the simulation process will be uh, created to evaluate the subgrade condition using the control environment to uh, see how the developed uh, methodology works. To evaluate the deflection and the stiffness of the beam on elastic foundation, a beam and a sprung mass is created and the simulated beam has 110 meter length and the foundation stiffness is simulated using the springs. To uh, simulate the stiffness variation along the section, four different uh, stiffness assumed and assigned to the springs. And to imitate the experiment, I mean the IW ex ex experiment, a sprung mass is modeled using a wheel and a mass mounted on it and, and, and a spring connected uh, wheel and mass to simulate uh, the primary suspension that we have in our real uh, data measurements. The following picture shows the assumption for the beam on the elastic foundation as the track and also a sprung mass as the vehicle. Also, the location of the measuring of load and acceleration in the simulation process is shown in the picture that you could see in figure number 16. Uh, the plots of the load and acceleration measured at the contact point and the body of a sprung mass are shown in the figure. And as it's shown, as it's actually obvious from the plots, the acceleration measured at the contact point clearly shows the variation in um, actually based on the model assumption. While the acceleration that we measured over the primary suspension shows a relatively smooth variation. It means when we work with side frame acceleration, we already should know that we miss some information related to the track. Uh, following plots show the load and acceleration signals over the relative stiffness variation calculated from the sprung mass uh, acceleration. The variation relatively agree uh, with the model assumption, and it shows that the methodology could detect track stiffness variation uh, relatively, but uh, it still need uh, further study to say promising thing about the subgrade condition. So this is still in progress to find the uh, final results. And uh, as the conclusion, and the stiffness variation can be evaluated by measuring the vehicle's response. That's the thing that we are trying to evaluate. And the method is presented in this paper to calculate the deflection and stiffness variation of the beam using the contact point load and also the side frame acceleration signals. Although it seems to be providing the intended results, there is still work to do to validate the results. And to imitate the IWS experiments, a beam on an elastic foundation is simulated and a sprung mass was moved along it to obtain the vehicle's response. The developed methodology is examined using the measured signals to evaluate the results and find that how it's so close to the assumption. And the simulated beam has been verified using both static and dynamic analysis. You could find it in the paper and stiffness variation and deflection have been calculated. According to the result, the deflection and stiffness variation agree well with the assumption of the model, but it still need to uh, say some promising thing about the real magnitude of the uh, stiffness. And as the acknowledge, uh, I just want to uh, thank the CN and NSERC and NRC for the great support and also the Transport Canada for uh, the, their supports for the car and also a special thanks to uh, Dr. Yan Liu, Elton Tomo, Dr. Rogani, and Gordon Paul for their constructive feedback during this study. Thanks for your attention, and uh, I'd be pleased to answer any question if there is any. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Reza. Uh, we do have time for one or two questions if there are any. Uh, 
I will start us off again since I'm curious. Uh, was the bridge structure chosen to test this method as it provides something close to a control scenario? And if so, is the plan to try and determine stiffness across an entire rail section in the future if this method does prove uh, useful? Yeah, actually, we plan to uh, use uh, real time data from the uh, train that pass along the track to uh, get the uh, information like the, uh, the load, especially the load information from the wheel sets, from the instrumented wheel set, and use them to find to detect the modulus variation along the track and say something about the problematic location, um, then actually need to be care, need to actually select to do more analysis and something like that. Okay, interesting, thanks. Yeah.